what's going on guys, it's Hi, and as you can see, my super has a good amount of water spots on the various glass surfaces. Now that the side windows and rear windows are tinted, the water spots just stick out and are super noticeable. I have to do something about it and have decided to approach this problem by polishing the glass. Normally, this can be done with just regular compound, but while prepping for this project, I discovered that Griot's Garage developed a glass specific compound and glass polishing pad. So I picked up the fine glass compound and glass polishing pads, and I'm going to share with you my experiences with these products. If you're interested in any of the products shown in this video, there will be links in the description below. To start off, I would suggest taping up the edges of the windows. As you can see, I attempted to do this, but the tape just wouldn't stick to this particular section of the window, so I gave up on the idea. I would suggest to figure out a way to do this from the start, because it will save you on cleanup time. I went back and got things figured out later, but again, it's better to tape the edges up from the start. Prior to polishing, it is important to do the necessary cleaning prep, because if not, we may pick up contaminants while polishing, smear it around, and cause even more damage. Let's first clean the glass to get rid of any obvious dirt and debris. To do this, I'm using Meguiar's Perfect Clarity Glass Cleaner. Instead of spraying directly on the glass, I like to spray into a microfiber towel and then spread the glass cleaner on. This helps to prevent overspray on other surfaces. I'm just going to wipe on, then flip the towel over to a dry section and wipe off any excess. Next, we're going to work to remove the contaminants that we can't necessarily see by claying the glass. I'll be using Meguiar's Mild Professional Detailing Clay and Last Touch Spray Detailer as a lubricant. I'm going to first spray the glass down with the final inspection. We want enough lubricant for the clay to move, but still offer some tactile feel. If you put too much lubricant down, the clay would just glide over everything and won't be too effective in picking up the contaminants. When claying, only light pressure is needed. Move it back and forth, making sure to cover all surfaces. If your windows are heavily contaminated, you'll be able to hear and feel the substance even under the clay. Normally once the surface is clean, it'll be smooth to the touch, but water spots themselves can provide a feedback that claying won't remove. Now we're ready to polish the glass. Because Griot's advertises their glass polishing products as being good for both hand and machine polishing, I decided to first give hand polishing a try. Griot's manufactures the glass polishing pads in a 3 and 6 inch size. I personally picked up the 6 inch pads because it was cheaper and an all around better deal. The 3 inch will likely fit in the hand more comfortably for hand polishing and will more easily fit in smaller sections of the glass, but I can realistically trim the 6 inch pad down and get even more bang for the buck. These pads are intended to be used with a machine polisher, but Griot's also recommends them for hand polishing glass, so we'll see how they do. To start off, I'm just going to put a few pea-sized dots of glass polish on the pad to test the combo out and see what it can do. If you're going to be trying this for yourself, know that every case is going to be different. My water spots are not going to be the same as yours, so you'll have to do your own testing. For a project like this, hand polishing is usually going to take a lot more time and effort than using a polisher. You're likely going to have to do a lot of scrubbing over multiple attempts. When it comes down to actually polishing, I'm just going to go at it. Up, down, side to side, circles, whatever. The goal here is to just hit everything. Luckily, glass is a very hard surface, so it's pretty difficult to mess this up. Polishing paint is different, so don't take what you're seeing here and transfer it to paint. One advantage of hand polishing is the ability to go right up to the edge. Even if I were to use a polisher, it's very likely that I would still have to go back and hand polish the sections that the machine can't get to. Once the polish is expended, it'll become more transparent and at this point, we can wipe it off and check the work. Take a look at this. As you can see, there's still a good amount of water spots around the edges, but once we move towards the middle, where most of the scrubbing was done, the glass looks clear and spot free, at least on camera. In person, the glass still has some very minor lines from the edges of the water spots. I'm going to go back and keep working at this to see what I can do.
after a few passes, I would say that the water spots are greatly reduced, but I wasn't able to get rid of everything. I could've, but at this point, I just decided that it would take too long to remove all my water spots by hand. I've been at it for about half an hour and I'm not even done with one window, so you can only imagine how long it would take to do all the glass surfaces by hand. At this point, it's time to pull out the polisher. If there's one thing that hand polishing has shown, it's that the water spots can definitely be removed. If hand polishing can do it, the machine should clear things up in no time. Flat out, the polisher is going to take care of the water spots. There was really no doubt in my mind about that. It's a great and fast way to approach water spots, but there are two negatives in my mind. First is of course the cost. If you don't have a polisher, then you have to buy one or get one somehow. Second, the polisher is most helpful when you're able to use multiple size pads. In this video, I only used a 6 inch pad on a dual action polisher. This worked well on the rear windshield where there is a lot of space to cover but I struggled on the side windows. For these smaller sections, a 3 inch pad would have been nice. I would have been able to get closer to the edges and get a lot more done with the polisher. Because I didn't have the smaller pads, I ended up having to go back and hand polish the edges and small corners anyways. So what do I think about Griot's fine glass polish and glass polishing pads? At the end of the day, I was able to significantly reduce my water spot problem. I got rid of them in the main sections of the glass and just have to go back and hand polish out some edges. Do these products work? Yes, but I don't think that they are the most efficient. When Griot's advertises the polish as fine, they really mean it. It just doesn't have a lot of cutting power and I feel the same about the glass polishing pads. It just doesn't cut very well. The label of the polish says, removes mild watermarks, but what does that mean? I would guess that it's only for water spots that are fairly new, those that have been sitting just long enough that all the chemical water spot removers can't remove. For the average person, I would assume that this type of water spot is going to be uncommon. People who have water spots are likely those who didn't care before and are going to have water spots that have been baked on for months or years. The super shown in this video was only 4 months old at the time, and I would say that the glass polish and pads struggled a bit. Both of these items can be more aggressive. When it comes to the pad, I realized that it didn't provide enough cut when I went back and hand polished the corners. I switched it up and used a felt applicator pad that I had lying around. This thing cuts the water spots so much faster than the glass polishing pads. This tells me that with a proper pad, the glass polish can be even more effective with a polisher. To summarize, the Griot's glass polishing products are more so intended for light water spots. They can remove heavily baked on water spots, but it's going to take more effort and attempts. If you're willing to put in the work, then I can definitely recommend these products. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up, share it around, comment down below with any thoughts or questions you may have. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more content. If you'd like to support my work, check out my Patreon or the other ways to contribute in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.